Hi, today we're going to go over how to make manual payouts with Stripe Connect in a bubble app. This will allow you to make apps like Upwork or any other app where the, the payment happens first and then there's a delay uh, and then the payout to uh, the merchant happens manually. Uh, so just for a demo, we have uh, this freelance platform and we're going to hire Brad Johnson for five hours. It's going to open up Stripe Checkout. Uh, we have a, a a uh, tutorial on how to use Stripe Checkout in more detail, so we're not going to get into it a ton today. Um, but as your customer uh, fills out this payment and they click pay, the funds are taken from the customer, right? And they end up in your in your Stripe account. But if you can see in this freelancer, this is the customer's freelance dashboard. We see the job hasn't been completed, and so we haven't made the payout yet. And if we look in Stripe, we can see that a payment just happened, 500 euro payment just happened, but no payout uh, has happened yet. And so now, you know, the job is done, whatever, however your app works, everything's over, now we make a payout. So now we've marked the job as complete. And if we go into Stripe again, we can now see that there was a 400 euro payout. And the reason it's 400, not 500, is we're, we're like a platform charging a fee. So let's get into building that. So the first thing we have to do uh, is allow a freelancer to sign up. Uh, so I'm going to sign up as Mr. Freelance. And this is obviously just a free freelance. Um, it's obviously just a, a regular sign up form um, in Bubble. Um, but now we've brought them to sign up to a freelancer dashboard. This is a page that you're gonna to need to build out and something that's gonna be really important um, to, to have as a parameter for the person, uh, for the freelancer is charges enabled. So right now it's no, because I just made the account. Just because they make an account on your platform, it doesn't mean they're activated in Stripe and they've put all their personal information in Stripe so that they can get payouts. Uh, and so you need, to, you need to keep track of that. Uh, and so we're gonna do a, allow people to register for a Stripe Express account. Uh, and so this interface with Stripe, there are a lot of ways that you can do it uh, in Bubble. You can write all the API calls manually. There are a lot of different ways you can do. Um, Crane for Tech has a has a plugin, um, which uh, is super super helpful. It's called the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin. Uh, it's got all the things you need to do to do everything in this video and all of our other tutorial videos. Uh, it's got it, we've got extensive docs here, uh, as well as an extensive uh, demo uh, demo app that has embedded uh, information that you might be watching right now. Uh, and so definitely recommend you check that out if you're building uh, a Stripe Connect uh, uh, in, uh, in Bubble. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this out. Okay, so this is a Stripe hosted form, so you don't have to build this information. Um, but your your customer is going to have to put in you know some personal information to so Stripe can verify them and their bank account and everything. I usually put in filler information, but uh, Stripe checks all of this, uh, and then it'll take you back to the account. And you can now see um, that we've enabled charges, and now we have a button that allows them to view the Stripe Express dashboard, where they can take a look at their earnings and payouts and all sorts of information. So how do we build that? This is that freelancer dashboard page, and we have two buttons. One is access the dashboard, which is after they're enabled. Uh, we allow, yeah, after charges are enabled, we allow it. Uh, and then, uh, or we hide it if charges are not enabled. And then register is, is when charges um, are not enabled yet. Uh, so let's focus on the register plugin, or the register action. The first thing we're gonna do is again, and this is using this Cranford Tech plugin, uh, is create an express account. Uh, so you have to specify a country, but you can do this dynamically if you have users in different countries. Just make sure you check Stripe Docs about uh, different countries support. Um, then you specify the email, and then this is really important, the payout interval. Now for this video, we're building a platform uh, where we, we want to do a manual payout, right? So you are as a platform are going to hold the money until something happens. Um, so you want to just select manual. These other options are if you were going to set up a different kind of platform where you would want to provide a payout after payment is made. Um, but again, the focus of this is manual. And so make sure this is manual um, when you set up the account. Um, because uh, if it's not set as manual, then we try and do the manual payouts, you'll get errors, it'll be a whole problem. 
After that, you want to make changes to the current user and you want to store their Stripe account ID. Now, this is the key throughout all of your Stripe uh, plugins and or all everything you ever do with Stripe, you need to have the seller account ID, uh, and so that'll be that'll be created uh, in this first step. Then you create an onboarding link that gets you to that Stripe hosted page, so you don't have to do any of that work of building that form or have to worry about storing that confidential information. Um, and you send just like everything else, you're going to need that account. You send the current user's account and then the refresh URL and the return URL, you just make them the dashboard page or if you want to send to a custom URL, but that's just when they finish is the return URL and then the refresh URL is like if they hit, if they hit cancel. Uh, and then you open an external website, not in a new tab. Uh, so it's just, it just loads up. So it feels like it's part of your app, um, the result of this step three. Uh, and then just the other thing we do for the Express dashboard, all you do is send their account ID to get an Express link. Um, so that's a link to the dashboard, and then you open an external website um, for that URL. Okay, now we're back in the profile, and I'm just gonna set up the, the freelancer information real quick. Uh, so first, just add a, add a photo, and of course, I am going to do Stripe Connect Setup uh, as my service, and I'm gonna make it super affordable, just, just 25. Uh, in this case, the platforms in euros. Um, now we're going to go back and log out of uh, the the freelancer side, log in as a customer, and see what happens. And so now we have this Stripe Connect set up as an additional service. Uh, and so I'll open this up, and then Mr. Freelance, that's me, and just hire me for an hour. Uh, and so again, we'll do the Stripe Connect. And now uh, it's $25. And just to explain how that works, if we go into the freelancer page, what we're doing, uh, this is a repeating group uh, with all the, or excuse, like this, we've, we sent the freelancer information. And so this is getting the, the freelancer information. You could build it in a repeating group or you could do it, um, you know, one page per freelancer. Um, we have the number of hours and we go into hire. And so what we do there is we're creating a transaction record uh, in our database and a job record. The job is connected to a client, which the person is logged in. Whether it's completed or not, obviously the default is no. Um, the cost is the number of hours in that input times the uh, current, the uh, hourly rate of the freelancer. And then we multiply it by 100. Uh, and the reason we multiply it by 100 is because in Stripe, you have to pass in the lowest denomination of the currency. So if you're using euros or dollars or anything that has a penny, you use cents. The freelancer is uh, the current, in this case, it's the current page user, but it, it would be you know that user freelancer. And then the transaction is the result of step one. Then we create that checkout session. Again, uh, check out the channel for more in-depth using uh, the checkout, um, but you can specify a platform fee, and the price, uh, make sure you go in cents, keep the currencies consistent, uh, products, uh, everything here. Then uh, we're just updating the transaction with information from the checkout. So that's the amount, the checkout session ID, which is helpful later if we're ever going to set up web hooks or, or any sort of, you know, we want to track the checkout session. And then the seller account ID, remember that's the key um, anytime you're interacting with Stripe. And then we open the external website, uh, which is the checkout. So I'm going to go back to the app and I'm going to make this $25 payment, 20, excuse me, 25 euro payment. Percent, percent this time. And now let's build the other part of the platform where we're going to go uh, and look at the customer dashboard. And we can now see this job, the job is not completed. Uh, and so we're able to make that payout. Let's get into how this make a payout button works. Uh, so when the when the payout is clicked, we only have to do two things. The first is we're going to make a change um, to the uh, the job to mark it as complete, and then we're going to use the Stripe Connect plugin to make a manual payout. And so again, we have the Stripe account ID, and then we have the amount. And so in this case, we're doing the amount multiplying by 0.8 because we're charging a 20% fee, um, but you can adjust this however you'd like. And then the currency. This currency uh, has to match the currency that the checkout session was created. So we did the last one in euros, we have to do euros. If you try and switch it to 
dollars there'll be an error uh, so let's take a look at um, this and unfortunately we're going to have a problem we're going to an error so let's investigate why we got the error um, if we take a look in um, first just in stripe and we go into our uh, logs we can take a look and sometimes it filters and so you have to clear all the filters so that you can see all the logs so the payouts we had an error and the error was that the balance is insufficient so there wasn't enough money in that stripe account to transfer and that's kind of weird right we put the twenty dollars in why isn't it there if we look at the account So this is that Mr. Freelance account that we just created. There's a balance of 20 euros, but the available to pay out amount is zero euros. Uh, and the reason for that is that the initial payout uh, for a Stripe account takes seven to 14 days. So that Stripe can do their, their background investigation on the person. So this is just a limitation of Stripe and, uh, and Stripe Connect. And actually it's, it's similar across all of these embedded payments platforms, um, but we can get around this in Bubble. Um, by adding an error. So the first thing we're going to do is say when the current rows jobs cost, um, and then we're going to multiply it by 0 0.8, right? Because we're, we're taking out that 20% is uh, greater than, and we need to look up the balance of the account. So we can do that with get data from an external API. And then we have, again, with this Cranford Tech plugin, we have the uh, a list of, of data we can get, including retrieve a connected account balance. Now we need that Stripe account. And so we get the current row job, uh, freelancers, Stripe, or freelancers, seller ID. And then we get the available balance. Um, oh, and then it returns it as a list for some reason. So you just need to say last item uh, or first item and then get the amount. So now we're saying when the value of the job uh, minus the fee is greater than the amount of money that's in the freelancer's account, instead of doing this manual payout and making change to the job, we're going to show uh, an, an error. Uh, and so we already, I already made this error. There are no funds available uh, in, the, in the box. Now, just the opposite, we just copy and paste. And now we say when the price of the job is less than or equal to the balance that we look up. So now we're saying there is enough money to, to, do, the, um, to do the transfer. So this, we're gonna duplicate that workflow again, and I just have it here um, just to save time, where first we're gonna make change to the job and mark it as complete, and then same Stripe payout phenomenon, the current row's job times 0.8, and keep the currency consistent. Uh, that is how we can get around that, that sort of Stripe limitation. So now when we try and make a payout, we'll see the error, there are not enough funds available in the Stripe account. So I am just for demo purposes uh, going to add funds to this account. Um, so you can do that from your platforms, uh, from your platforms account, at like fifty dollars. Um, and then this is sort of a weird account because of the currency conversion. So uh, uh, so we'll put it in as dollars, but it'll it'll go to euros. Um, you can you can always do this. Um, when when you have these these connect accounts, there's a small fee from Stripe. Um, which you should check, but you can always add money manually if you need to. And so now, because I just added that money, there's now avail this available to pay out right now. And so if I go back to our customer dashboard, now we don't have an error. And so now we can check out Mr. Freelance Stripe account, and we can see that that payout has been made. So that was how to integrate uh, Stripe Connect uh, manual payouts um, to build a marketplace app like Upwork. Uh, using the Cranford Tech plugin uh, in Bubble. Um, there are a lot of other videos here on the Cranford Tech YouTube channel if you'd like to learn more about uh, Bubble uh, and Stripe Connect or, or many of the other plugins uh, that we offer. Uh, and reach out if you need any help. Thanks.